Here is a 2023 Toyota Corolla Cross XLE in blue crush metallic over soft tech black interior. What's new for 2023? What does the XLE have in different competition? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over all the specs from the interior, exterior, and take it for my drive. Up front, LED headlamps, they're projected for low and high beam, LED fog lamps, because this is the XLE trim. You will not receive that on the L or the LE. You will get standard daytime runnings that are LED. The grill gets the gloss black satin aluminum that's going to surround it. The L and LE will have a different appearance to the front fascia. You're gonna get the matte black that's gonna surround the middle, same color key, in the lower part of the bumper. 8.1 inches of ground clearance, which is better than the all new Chevy Trax, Honda CRV or HRV. This is more of a mid-size to subcompact SUV because it slots in where the CHR would be for the smallest and the RAV4 would be a little bit longer. However, we don't have a CHR anymore. This is taking its spot, making this the smallest SUV in the Toyota line. 17 inch hubcaps will be standard on the L, 17 inch alloy wheels on the LE, 18 inch for the XLE, and they have a hybrid option as well, which will get sport tuned suspension for the McPherson strut and multi-link rear. Standard suspension will be an independent double wishbone McPherson strut front and a torsum beam rear. The rockers and the fenders will flare out with the matte black. The chrome will surround the top trim of the windows going into the Corolla Cross badging, which is only on the XLE and up. When you go into the L or the LE, all matte black, the roof rails will be standard in the matte black. 2.0 liter, four cylinder with 169 horsepower. This is a standard engine option, 151 pound feet of torque. Paired to the CVT transmission, which when you're in this segment, almost everybody is with the CVT, unless you go to the Mazda CX-30, it's about 2.6 inches longer. So you can see what I mean by, this is kind of that happy medium in the sense of giving you a little bit more leg room for the rear occupants and a little bit more cargo capacity. 31 MPGs for the city, 33 MPGs for the highway, and you're still able to tow 1,500 pounds. The XLE gets everything LED for the back, your stoplights, your taillights. You only get stoplights LED for the LE. Also, color key for the roof rail, and on the lower, you'll get it in between the matte black with the reverse parking sensors and a reverse camera. It's a very busy segment. So even comparing this against the Nissan Rogue, this is going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more wider, but again, one of the best in ground clearance. XLE, you also receive a power lift gate, which goes into 24 cubic feet of storage. The bumpers will sit up with a wide opening, 24 cubic feet of storage, storage on both sides with the upgraded JBL sound system, a spare tire tucked underneath the floor, split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split. That will increase the cargo to the Corolla Cross. It does have about a four inch lip for the way the seats are. Let's go inside this 2.0, start it up so you can hear that exhaust now. Going in the XLE with 10-way power seat adjustment, heated front seat, soft tech seating with the contrast stitching. You'll also receive six cup holders through the cabin instead of the standard four. Headroom for the XLE starts at 39.5 inches because we do have a moonroof. Legroom is gonna be 42.9 inches. It is a deep footwell. The only complaint that I have is when you're entering or leaving the area where the rails are, they're pushed up too much in which I constantly hit it 
with my leg. Optional JBL sound system, which is nine speakers, including a subwoofer and amplifier, starts on the LE. Satin aluminum is going to start the first tier that goes into the air vents, eight inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Wi-Fi hotspot. Put it into reverse, you will have trajectory. It does expand for the XLE, but it will not for the L. Going into dual climate control settings, which is standard for the XLE, the L will just be a climate control. Heated seat switches with a USB and a QI wireless charging pad that starts on the LE. Going into gloss black satin aluminum, the key fob for the Toyota Corolla Cross. It's gonna be more soft. Open up inside to another USB and a 12 volt. It's a deep pocket. It's not so wide. It is pushed back, leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. The L and the LE will be a 4.2 digital cluster, whereas this is a seven inch digital cluster. It can go through an array of information, changing any settings for the driver and changing out different layout settings. The dashboard and the door panels can figure into each other, more of your everyday materials. The satin aluminum is going to be on the grab handle, software you need it to be, one touch up and down for the front windows, a medium storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out in the front. Headroom for the back seat is at 39.1 inches. If you move a little bit, it's going to be a little bit more tight because the way it is designed, it is pretty much circular. Leg room at 32 inches, it's going to be a little bit more tight. You expect that because it's a smaller SUV. Soft with the cup holders here in the center. Two USB in the back with the air vents and storage only behind the passenger seat. The door panel is going to be bulged out. That's the feeling that you get, but it's soft where it needs to be with a cup holder. Sitting in the center, the rails are pushed back even though they're pushed forward. So your feet are going to be hitting. Butt space and shoulder space will be a little bit tight. This is a smaller SUV, but for the headroom, it's actually doable. Turn radius is gonna start this review off and you're going to receive about two and a part lane. Let's rock and roll. It gets up and goes. It does what it needs to for an everyday vehicle. Zero to 60 is around nine, 10 seconds. So don't necessarily pull out in front of people, but if you need to do some quick maneuvers in and out, you can, because the vehicle is also not that long. Two different power options. You can option this or the hybrid, which the hybrid gets 196 horsepower. However, it's more for your MPGs than the motivation, where this has 169 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. The CVT transmission also kind of slows the vehicle down, but when you're in this tier of a vehicle, it's kind of normal unless you're going into like a Mazda CX-30 or a Volkswagen Tiguan. Most of them are all going to be CVT. Comparing this against the new Chevy Trax, that's going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit less height, but it's gonna have a little bit more technology. It's more driver focused. This is more of an everyday focused vehicle in which you do have to pay for your applications. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons and starting off with is some pros. When you're in the XLE, this is the sweet spot if you don't wanna to go to an hybrid, meaning power seat adjustment for the driver, heated front seats, power lift gate, and you will not receive this on the L. Some options are on the LE. Another thing that's cool about this is the adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist. You can set it at a stoplight, it will engage the brake, and as soon as the vehicle moves forward, it will move. And if it moves forward and it comes to a stop, all you have to do is hit the resume button. Cargo isn't bad. I did like the CHR styling better on the exterior, but I could see how that would hurt the UX Lexus sales. And I mean, when you have so many variants of SUVs and Toyota plus Lexus, they just do a lot. It really starts hurting some of the segments. So cleaning it up and getting rid of it, I think it was a more intelligent move, but then putting the rear suspension with the torsum beam, making you have to go to hybrid to get a multi-link rear suspension the front is an independent double wishbone suspension. So you're doing all this dynamics for the front and then the back, you're just like, forget about it. I don't understand what they're doing. Taking me to some other things that I like is when you're in the XLE, you got six cup holders. Well, 
you have five occupants. So now everybody has an area they can fit their bottle. You don't get that on the L or the LE and you get more charging ports and air vents in the center. I've done the L and when I was reviewing it, it's great everyday type of vehicle, but it definitely doesn't tick the box to go above and beyond. Stopping, you can stop on a dime if you need to. If you give her a go around 15 miles, going to have a touch of hesitation. You're going to hear a significant around, amount of road noise, but it's to be expected because it's a vehicle that's in a $20,000, $30,000 price point. You want more sound deadening, you're going to have to go to the hybrid trim. And that takes me to some more negatives about the vehicle. When you are comparing this to Rivals, this is an all new vehicle of last year. It feels like it's a carryover technology, doesn't feel so updated. And a lot of that's derived because it has a smaller screen that just comes out over the air vents. It's nothing seamless. The dashboard does look good. I don't like how it bulges out and there's more harder materials found throughout the interior of this than some of the Rivals. The ride is just as comfortable and I do like that we have the soft tech seats instead of the fabric because that's what comes standard in the L. And the LE can option a few things, but really you want to go into the XLE, which takes me to some other negatives because it's starting to price you out in the $30,000 price point. Here you'll have more interior room in the front, but the rear occupants are going to sacrifice. And where the rails are, it's very tight for the front and for the back because you're going to constantly hit it if you're tall and you're going to hit it in the back seat if you're sitting in the center. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, the merchandise website, Instagram, Leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2023 Toyota Corolla Cross XLE for our car review.